So this takes us to the concept, the last concept in uh, religion as astrotheology, that ultimately what we are seeing is the breakdown of consciousness on the earth. And we are seeing the earth as a global brain. This is a very critical concept to understand. It will help people to understand why the events that are playing out in the regions of the world that they are, are happening the way that they are and in the locations that they are. So if we look at the earth, if we consider that the earth is a living brain, it is actually a con one consciousness, one brain, it has two hemispheres. We have a Western Hemisphere and an Eastern Hemisphere. So if we symbolically correlate this to the concept of the bilaterally symmetrical brain, we can place the structure of the brain on top of the Earth map. So we have a left hemisphere of the brain and we have a right hemisphere of the brain. So you want to picture that you're actually looking kind of this as, at the, as the back of the head. So this area is, the, let's say this is the back of the head, okay? And this is the left hemisphere of the brain, that's the right hemisphere of the brain. So you need to envision your head looking this way, okay? Picture your eyes looking that way. This area of the earth is your left brain, this area of the earth is your right brain. And if you understand how religious ideologies are structured on earth, this begins to make a whole lot of sense because we have three basic astrotheological sects that each correlate to a major world religion. Um, uh, the Solar sect of astrotheology is named after uh, the god um, Horus. And Horus's name in uh, other Egyptian um, uh, in other Egyptian uh, cosmological um, uh, uh, studies was, his, his name was Amen-Ra. Amen-Ra is the name that is invoked when Christians pray a prayer and then they say the word Amen after the prayer is said to invoke the sun god of Amen-Ra. What he really represented was the sun at his zenith, at his highest point in the sky, Amun-Ra uh, represented. So it is the sun not at each horizon, uh, at, the, at the rising horizon, he could be called Horus, the golden falcon, at the setting horizon, he is set, but at the zenith, his highest point in his arc across the sky, he was known as Amun-Ra. And often this was just shortened to Ra or Re, uh, where we get the word rays of the sun from. So it's another name for the sun god Horus. And we have seen that this is the religion of Christianity and its symbol is the sun on the cross. There you have the sun behind the cross right there. And I'm going to place the blade as this western left hemispherical religion, the male religion. So the symbol I'm placing on the sun here is the blade, the upward pointing triangle representing yang energy, male energy. The moon cult or sect of astrotheology is named after the moon goddess Isis depicted here. So this is Isis, the moon religion is the predominant religion of the Eastern Hemisphere, and it is Islam. Islam's main symbol is the crescent moon. And we see, just as Christianity is the predominant religion of the Western left brain of the Earth, the left hemisphere, and it's a male principle, the um, religion of Islam means Surrender. The word Islam means surrender to God because it is the religion of the predominant religion of the right brain hemisphere, which is passive or surrendering. So, Isis, 
correlates to the right hemisphere of the Earth and the right brain hemisphere of uh, the, the human brain. And on the moon, I'm going to place the inverted uh, uh, triangle known as the chalice. Now, there's another world religion, and it is based upon the um, sect of astrotheology of the stars and planets. So the creator god Osiris is looked at as the god of all the stars, because he's the god of all the suns. He created the heavens. And um, in um, Phoenicia, Cana, he was the um, ruler of the planet Saturn. Saturn is the um, is the planet that is farthest from the sun that can still be seen with the uh, with the naked eye. So his orbit is seen to encompass all other planets. As such, he's the ruler of the planets that that revolve that revolve around the sun that have orbits around the sun. And in uh, in um, <coughs> in Semitic religions, ancient Semitic religions. This god was known as El. It's where it means God, the word El. In uh, Judaism, which is what uh, the uh, Judaism is actually this aspect of astrotheology. Its religion, uh, its symbol is the star, okay? The stars, because it is the religion of the stars and the planets, the pinpoints of light, as we talked about them, the, the small lights in the heavens. So, uh, the, the name of God in Judaism is Elohim, and it's plural. The reason it's plural is because there isn't one God. There's many gods. Elohim means the stars and planets. That's why, that's the big mystery about why El is pluralized in the Bible. Because the real astrotheological basis of Judaism is the stars and the planets, plural, the many lights of the heavens. So that's where Elohim is actually derived. And of course, just like their symbol being the star, it's the combination of the male and the female symbols into one. Now, the reason that there is a twofold aspect to uh, the middle part, the middle pillar of the earth, is because in the middle, if we're looking at the brain from the back side of the brain, okay, so your head is actually facing this way, and you're imagining this side as your left brain hemisphere, this side as your right brain hemisphere, what do we see playing out in the world today? We see the left brain Christian nations of the western hemisphere waging war against the right-brained Islamic surrendering nations, or the, the ideology of the surrender to God as being their religion, the basis of their religion, we're waging war over here in the Eastern Hemisphere, in this region, okay? Um, so it's like the left brain is over attacking the right brain. And the Middle East, the Middle Eastern region is where all of this conflict is, is centered. And the reason that it's centered on that part of the earth is because this region of the earth is the back of the brain of the earth. It is the cerebellum of the earth. The opposite side of the earth is where the Pacific Ocean is at. So. That's where the energies are truly united on the opposite side of the earth, the peaceful ocean, P uh, Pacific, peaceful. It's the prefrontal neocortex of the earth, the third eye of the planet, so to speak. And right on the other side of the globe from this point, you would see in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the Hawaiian Islands with the largest volcano on the earth, Mauna Kea Volcano on the big island of Hawaii. It is the, the physical representation of the third eye of the planetary brain. All the conflict is happening on the other side, the back of the head of the earth, the cerebellum of earth, uh, which is the Middle Eastern region, Middle Earth. 
the, around the Mediterranean region. So this is a proof of the hermetic principle of as above, so below. As the individual units of consciousness upon the planet become imbalanced toward one polarity or the other, you will see the reflection happen on a grand scale on the entire planet. The Earth is in a state of left brain imbalance because we are in a state of left brain imbalance. And we are seeing all the conflict driven by the R complex of the Earth, which is the Middle Eastern region, which correlates, it maps symbolically to the cerebellum of the Earth. If another country happened to be there at that location, that's where you would see the turmoil and conflict happen. It is, it is a reflection of the Hermetic Principle. As the individual goes, as all the collective, indi uh, collective uh, individuals go on the planet, as their consciousness goes, so the mass consciousness will go and you will see it reflected on a grand scale. So as we see these three religions put together of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, when we put them all together, we get Isis, which is Islam, the lunar religion, Ra, or Horus, the solar religion of Christianity, and El, the religion of Judaism. We get Isis plus Ra plus El, and that spells the word Israel. Now, this is important to understand because you have to understand that this region of the world is where these astrotheological sects actually consolidated the knowledge of the mystery traditions and then began to disseminate their knowledge and culture into other regions of the world. So it is um, simply an understanding that that knowledge was concentrated in that region of the world before it then began to go out and populate other areas of the world with that information. And this is uh, one of the main reasons why the country of Israel, the government of Israel, has so much influence with m many uh, other nations more po populated than it and seemingly wielding more political power, but there is such a concentration of uh, the ability to lobby uh, these other nations, such as the United States and Great Britain, uh, uh, with, um, uh, with the uh, desires of the government of Israel, because the, the, the power of these astrotheological sects is still highly concentrated in the region that we now call Israel, which was formerly Phoenicia Cana, uh, and the, the knowledge of the mystery traditions actually came into that region through uh, Egypt and Babylon and uh, the, uh, the, the mystery tradition centers that were around what we now call the state of Israel. So that explains why Israel is so influential in what is taking place uh, in the Middle East region of the world, and it explains why the ties with uh, larger, more populous nations are in place. It is in no way any kind of a uh, commentary on the, the uh, nationality or the religion of the people of that region. It is simply a commentary on the government of Israel and why it wields the amount of influence that it does. So that is religion as binding.